Guys, in this class, I shall be teaching you pure strategies under game theory. We shall take lots of examples. Guys, this is the example of prisoner's dilemma. Suppose there are two suspects and the police does not have any evidence against them. So what they do is they keep them in a separate room and tell them the following three things. If you think on your companion but your companion does not think on you, you will get one year and your companion will get four years in jail. If you both think on each other, you will each get three years in jail. If you both remain silent, both will get two years in jail. Now, uh, the following thing is called a payoff matrix and usually it is you know, expressed in positive terms. So if you have a look at those three conditions, you will find that the maximum imprisonment is four years. Now, there are two strategies available to both these aspects, which we call players. Either they think or they remain silent. So first is think and think. So if they both think on each other, that is the second point. They were getting a jail of three years, whereas the maximum uh, four years. So one and one, that is years of freedom. What about if one guy thinks and other guys remains silent? That is first condition. So if the guy who is thinking will get only one year uh, as you know sentence and the other guy will get four years in jail. So in terms of freedom, the guy who thinks will get three years of freedom, whereas the other guy who doesn't think will get a zero. Third condition is if they both remain silent. So if they both remain silent, they both will get two years in jail, maximum jail being four years. So the years of freedom shall be two years each. So I shall now be teaching you how to solve a Nash equilibrium under prisoner's dilemma. Now guys, I shall teach you how to solve a Nash equilibrium. Now, how to play this game? Well guys, suppose suspect one thinks that the suspect two is gonna think. Though he doesn't know what uh, the other guy is going to do. But suppose suspect 1 assumes that suspect 2 is going to think. Now suspect 1 has to decide whether he should think or he should remain silent. So if he thinks he'll get 1 year of freedom. If he remains silent he'll get a 0 year of freedom. So I think it makes sense for this guy to think. So I'm just underlining that. I repeat. If suspect 1 thinks that the suspect 2 is going to think, suspect 1 has to decide whether he is going to think or he is going to remain silent. Now suppose if he looks at the options available, if he thinks he will get 1 year of freedom, if he remains silent he will get a 0 year of freedom, so it makes sense for him to think. Now. Suppose now sub suspect one uh, thinks that uh, the suspect two is going to remain silent. Now again he has to decide whether he is going to think or he is going to remain silent. If he thinks three years of freedom, if he remains silent two years of freedom, again it makes sense for him to think. Now we will play this game in reverse. Now suspect two suppose, you know, su su uh, suppose suspect two thinks that this suspect one is going to think. Now suspect 2 has to decide whether he should be thinking or remaining silent. If he thinks, 1 year of freedom. If he remains silent, 0. So he's going to think. Now again suspect 2 thinks that suspect 1 is going to remain silent. Now suspect 2 needs to decide whether he wants to think, that's 3, or whether he wants to remain silent, that is 2. So 3 does make sense to us. So I'm going to again revise or repeat that for you. Suppose suspect 1 thinks that suspect 2 is going to think. So suspect 1 has two options, think or silent. If he thinks, 1 year of freedom. If he remains silent, 0. So think. Suppose suspect 1 thinks that suspect 2 is going to remain silent. Suspect 1 has to choose either to think or to remain silent. If he thinks, 3. If he remains silent, 2. It makes sense to think. So you must have observed one thing here. That whether suspect 1 or rather suspect 2 is thinking or remaining silent suspect 1 is going for thinking this is called dominant strategy now same is going to be uh, you know uh, applicable with suspect 2 suppose suspect 2 thinks that suspect 1 is going to think so don't you think he has to decide whether to think or remain silent think one year su silent zero so he's going to think so now suppose suspect 2 thinks that suspect 1 is going to remain silent he has to decide think or silent think 
So again, suspect two, irrespective of what the suspect one is doing, that is either thinking or remaining silent, suspect two is thinking. So again, this guy also has a dominant strategy. A dominant strategy is one that says irrespective of what the other guy is doing, for one particular player is sticking to one particular strategy. In this case, the strategies are either to think or to remain silent. Now, if you look, this think think has two underlying things. So this is going to be Nash equilibrium, where you get the, the two points which are underlined or all the options which get underlined is called Nash equilibrium. Here you have only one underlined, here you have only one underlined, here you have none. So where you have both of the points underlined, that will be called as your Nash equilibrium or in other words, best possible point. Now I shall be teaching you a very, very famous game called Battle of the Sexes. Suppose uh, there is a couple, a husband uh, and a wife. They both want to go to a date on uh, this coming weekend. Uh, the wife loves to go to ballet and while the husband loves to go to boxing. Well, in this game, the main condition is that they should be together. So I repeat the rules of the game. Wife loves to go to ballet while husband loves to go to boxing. But the main condition is that they should be together. So now in order to make a pay of matrix in such a game, see what I have done. Here player one is wife, player two is husband. Uh, you could interchange it as well. You could have taken husband here and wife here, no problems. So first and foremost thing is you should be able to build a pay of matrix on your own. So now suppose wife that is player one has got two strategies up her sleeves that is ballet and boxing whereas husband also has two strategies ballet and boxing that is they need to decide whether they want to go to ballet or they want to go to boxing now suppose ballet and ballet so if they both are going to ballet don't you think wife would, would be more happy so i have given her two points whereas husband will get one point because at least he is with his wife well, if wife goes to ballet, husband goes to boxing, they both get zero because the main condition that is they should be together is violating. Now, boxing ballet, same thing. They're not together. What about boxing, boxing? Well, in that case, wife is going to get one because she is with you know, her husband and the husband is going to get two because not only he is with his wife, also he gets to watch a boxing match. Let's play this game, Battle of the Sexes, Pure a Strategy. Now suppose wife thinks that husband is gonna go for ballet. Wife thinks that husband is gonna go for ballet. Wife has to then decide ballet or boxing. Ballet or boxing. Ballet or boxing. Well, ballet. Now suppose wife thinks husband is gonna go for boxing. Wife has to decide ballet or boxing. Ballet or boxing. Ballet or boxing. Boxing. Here, if you think, uh, if you see it properly, there is no dominant strategy. Dominant strategy is one, whether, uh, where rather one player is, you know, uh, sticking to one particular strategy irrespective of what the other guy is doing. Here, I'm afraid that is not happening. Now, we will play this game from the point of view of husband. Now, suppose husband thinks that the wife is going to go for ballet. Husband has to decide ballet or boxing, ballet or boxing, ballet or boxing, well, ballet. Now suppose husband thinks that his wife is going to go for boxing. So husband has to decide ballet, boxing, ballet, boxing, well, boxing. Now don't you think, uh, guys, we have got two points, ballet, ballet and boxing, boxing, where both the options are underlined. So in this case, my dear friends, we have got two Nash equilibriums. Now guys, I've got this third game for you. The game is a very famous one called Rock, Paper and Caesar. Let's first clear the roots. Rock defeats Caesar because it can break it. Caesar defeats Paper because it can cut it. And Paper defeats Rock because it can cover it. In this game, we have got two players. The winner is going to get a $1 and the loser is also, uh, has to you know, give a $1 away. So player one has three strategies, rock, paper, scissor, and player two also has three strategies, rock, paper, and scissor. Let's start. Now suppose player one thinks that player two will play rock. So he has to decide rock, paper, scissor, rock, paper, scissor. I think should be going for paper. Now suppose player one thinks that player two is going to play paper. So player one, rock, paper, scissor. I think scissor. So now suppose player one thinks that player two is going to play scissor. So 
rock paper scissor is gonna go for rock reverse the game now player two thinks that player one is gonna play rock he has to decide rock paper scissor paper player two thinks that player one is gonna play paper so player two rock paper scissor so i think uh, if you see it's scissor so player two thinks player one is gonna play scissor what is player two gonna do rock paper scissor a rock you will find in this particular game that there is no such box where both the points are underlined so in this case we have no nash equilibria and i've got one more um, way to prove it why there is no nash equilibria well guys nash equilibria is like a general equilibria point which actually suggests the best possible outcome for both the players now don't you think in this case if there is a tie it cannot be considered as the best outcome for both because the best outcome always has to be win but now suppose if one wins and one loses so the guy who has lost uh, that particular outcome will not be considered best for him so that's why in such a game we can't have a nash equilibria because we can't have a point where both the guys both the players are getting maximum advantage or maximum benefit guys i now have one more game of pure strategy suppose there are two firms firm a and firm b let it be a case of a duopoly now they have two strategies either they can charge a low price for the products they are selling or they can charge a higher prices we have an imaginary values over here suppose firm a and firm b both charges low prices so they're gonna get say two million dollars each if uh, A charges low and B charges high, so the one that is A who is charging a lower price will get six, and the higher uh, the the guy who is charging a higher price will get one. So high one, low six. If they both charge high prices, they both gonna get three. So it makes sense for both of them to charge high, right? Because in that case they will be earning three and three each, respectively. But the catch is that they really don't know what the other guy is gonna do. And that is the beauty of this game theory. So now again, we're going to play this particular game and see what will be the Nash equilibria or uh, whether there, there will be some dominant strategies or not. Suppose firm A thinks that the firm B is, uh, you know, going to charge a lower prices. So firm A has to decide low or high, low or high. I think low. Now suppose firm A thinks that firm B is going to charge a higher price. So firm A, low or high, low or high, I guess low. So as you must have figured it out that in this particular game so far, firm A looks like having a dominant strategy of charging a lower price. Because even if firm B is charging lower price, it is charging low. Firm B is charging higher price, it is again charging a lower price. Now reverse the game. Suppose the firm B now thinks that firm A is going to charge a low price. So firm B low or high? I guess low. Now suppose firm B thinks that firm, B, firm A is going to charge a higher price. So now firm B low or high? Low. So in this case firm B also has a dominant strategy of charging a lower price. My dear friends, when both the players are having a dominant strategy, there will have to be a unique Nash equilibria, which we found in the case of prisoner's dilemma as well. So guys, this is our Nash equilibria. Now guys, this game is quite an important one because it will teach us two different things, two new things. So please focus. Now suppose we have got a game where we have a batsman and a baller. So let me call it as player one, that's baller and batsman as player two. Now, uh, so far we have done four questions. In all the questions, the strategies for both the players were same. In this case, I've deliberately changed that. So batsman have got two strategies. Either he'll be hitting a ball or defending it, hit or defend. And baller also has got two strategies, but these two strategies are different. From baller, the first strategy is bouncer and the other strategy is yorker so this is one new thing uh, which is different from the other uh, games with that we have played so far uh, there is one more different thing which we shall be exploring while we solve the question let's start guys let's play this game now suppose baller thinks that batsman is gonna hit him so bouncer or yorker i think bouncer 
Now suppose bowler thinks that batsman is going to defend. So what should bowler be doing? Bouncer or yorker? Well, a bouncer. So in this case, bowler has a dominant strategy of having a bouncer ball. Now, reverse the game. Now suppose batsman think that the bowler is going to bowl a bouncer. So batsman, hit or defend? I guess defend. Now you've got to be extra smart. Please have a great look. Now suppose batsman think that the bowler is going to ball a yorker. So now don't you think batsman is going to hit or defend? Hit or defend? Since they both are same, you have to underline both the points. So if there is a clash, you've got to uh, underline both the points. Now in this case, guys, as you have uh, seen, this is your Nash Equilibria, Bouncer and Defend. So I hope uh, the pure strategy examples have been great for you. If you want to practice more questions, you can WhatsApp me at my number and I should be happy to give you lots of questions to practice under pure strategy. In the next video, I shall be teaching you mixed strategies.